important to answer this question. What are, what are the things that every leader needs to know about knowledge? Number one thing is what? Leaders' captivity or limitation is caused by lack of knowledge. Let's read that statement one more time. Leaders' what? Captivity or limitation is caused Isaiah, 50, Isaiah 5 verse 13 says this. Therefore my people have gone into captivity because of what? Because of lack of knowledge. Every captivity in life is connected with lack of knowledge. Somebody is where they are because of what they do not know. So, the scripture here is saying that as a, as a Christian leader, if I, am, if I lack knowledge in whatever area that I want to lead, I will be limited because there, there is no way I can be able to lead without knowledge. The Bible continues to say the honorable men are banished and their multitude dried up with dust. So, let's, let's read uh, those statements. So, and if we can make it, Abby, let's put the, the banner. If we can be able to make it, let's just put the banner to just make it uh, look nice. So, let's read the statements. What, what are the statements say? Eh? Leaders cannot operate beyond their own. In any area, they are required to lead. Let's say one more time. Because this is important. Leaders cannot what? Leaders cannot. Leaders cannot operate. Leaders cannot operate. That's what we are. We are number, we are number one. Leaders cannot operate beyond their personal level of, of, of knowledge in any area they, they are required to lead. In any area I'm required to lead in the kingdom of God. And not even in the kingdom of God. Whether in the marketplace, whether in the business place, whichever area that I want to become a leader, I got to have my personal knowledge on that area. Let, let me... Let me put it this way. Today, if, if I show up, or Pastor Tracia, you show up in, in, a, in a hospital when somebody is, is undergoing an open heart surgery, and uh, you introduce yourself, uh, you are the senior pastor of Christ Harvesters, and you are here to uh, help the, the cardiologist or whatever to be able to open that heart. Uh, much as we love you as a pastor, you have little or no knowledge, zero knowledge about opening hearts. It's true you, you are a pastor, but you have no knowledge about opening the heart. But, but there, is, there, is, there is a doctor who, who, who even when they sleep, they, they, can, look, they can look at you and they, they even actually know this artery goes because already they have knowledge in that area. So uh, every leader, as we have said, leaders, and that's a statement, cannot operate beyond the what? The level of knowledge in any area. So if I want to operate in any area, what I need is... An, and as we shall see, desire itself is not enough. I need knowledge. You can, I can have a desire to be a doctor. That does not make me a doctor. I can have a desire to, um, I can desire so much to be a pilot. But that cannot make me fly a plane. The next statement says this. Captivity is a state of what? Is a state of imprisonment or confinement. Is a state of what? Captivity or what? You, you have it in your note. <laughs> Captivity is a state of what? So that is to mean lack of knowledge 
imprison or confines leaders, thus hindering them from making any meaningful progress. That is to mean, if I'm a Christian leader or I'm a leader in any aspect of life, and I am, I lack knowledge, that is to mean I'm confined. I'm confined because uh, it is knowledge that uh, propel me into progress. I can, if, if, um, if I want to become a business person, I, I need to have knowledge about what it is that I am I'm doing. The second thing that we need to know about knowledge, we have said that number one, people are limited because as leaders, because of what they know. You, your advancement, your achievement as a Christian leader can only be proportional to what you know. Number two thing as a leader that you need to know about knowledge is that people are destroyed for what? For lack of knowledge. You, you and me have seen it and uh, we, people blame the devil for literally everything. I'm not here to just say that he is innocent. But uh, the scripture identify that um, ignorant is one of the hindrance that hinders people from progressing. Hosea 4 verse 6 says this. My people are what? Are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It says I will reject you, uh, you from being preached. Because you have forgotten the law of the Lord, I will also forget your children. So we are making a few statements right there, which are saying this. Ignorance is the identified scriptural what? source of personal degradation. To degradate is just to just be reduced into nothingness. So the scripture does not even actually identify the devil as the cause of why people get destroyed. Because even the one who the devil destroy, the, the devil only feed on the ignorant. Let me say one more time. The devil only feed on the what? That's why the scripture says that be, uh, do not be unaware of the devices of the enemy. Because the enemy can't capture you unless he has a device he is using. And, and one of the enemy's tool is called ignorance. Let me say one more time. One of the devil's tool is called who? Ignorance. If you want to kick the devil out of your territory, one of the things you need to kick out is ignorance. Because the devil takes advantage. Those who reject knowledge, those who reject knowledge, disqualify themselves from assuming leadership responsibility. The Bible doesn't say they are disqualified by anybody. If you read your, your, your Bible, the, where we have read where it says, because they have, I want us to look at uh, Hosea 4, where we have said, because you have done what? Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you. As what? As from being priest for me. God, God himself is saying, if, if you want to be a priest, a priest is that leader, is that person who stand on, uh, on behalf of the people. Is that person who have been given the, the, the responsibility to represent people. God is saying, if you have rejected knowledge, you cannot stand before me. You, you disqualify yourself. So if you and me want to become effective priests, which I believe as Christian minister, that is our calling. One of the things that we must endeavor to do is to fight ignorance. The next statement we are making is this. Desire without knowledge results into frustration. 
Let me say that one more time. No matter how much I desire to fly an aeroplane, my desire can never make me a what? <laughs> help me, help me. My desire cannot help make me a what? No matter how much I want to become a cardiologist, my desire, I, 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 I go to the hospital and tell them, I have always had a desire to open people's what? Heart. They'll tell me, no, you don't have a desire. You, you want to kill people. You want to do what? <laughs> because, because, because a desire itself does not warrant or qualify me. The Bible says this in the book of Proverbs 19 verse 2. And it says, desire without knowledge is not good. It says, desire without knowledge is not good. If, if I desire to become anything, I want to become a great successful business person, but I don't have a, a, the knowledge or the, uh, on how to become, that, no, that desire becomes a source of frustration. Bible says, how much more will his feet miss the way? You know what the Bible is saying? It's saying there are people who, who history goes to do things that they, ha they do not have the knowledge or the know-how on how to do them. So we have said desire itself is not enough. We are answering the question as Christian leaders. What are some of the things I need to know about knowledge? Number three. No, leaders can never rise beyond their, let me say one more time, leaders can never rise beyond their what? Their knowledge. I, I can be anything beyond what I know. That is why if I want to rise, if I, if I want to change myself, what I need to do is not even to print business cards. It's not even to um, do this. Or What I need to do is to change, be knowledgeable, just be enlightened, uh, get to know what it is that God has called me to do. Jesus himself said it is the knowledge of the truth that makes people free. John 8 verse 32 a scripture that we all know says, and you shall know the truth. And the truth shall do what? So, I know this scripture, we can use it to mean that we are preaching to people to come and be born again. But I believe the scripture, as Paul would write to his mentee, Timothy, the scripture is profitable. For doctrine is 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 profitable even on our daily life, and what the Bible says, you shall know the truth, and the truth you shall do what, make you free. So every truth I know about leadership, that is a truth that will make me free. I I will be as free as a truth I have known. Number four thing you need to know about truth is what? Knowledge knowledge is not free. Let's read one more time. Knowledge is what? Knowledge is not free but has, has a price attached to it. I, I cannot automatically be knowledgeable. I wake up one morning and I have what? I have knowledge about how to become an effective Christian leader. I have knowledge on how to become a good business person. I have knowledge on how to become a good pastor. Meaning, I have knowledge about how to become this. Meaning, I gotta have to seek for what? For knowledge. Meaning, if, if today God has called me, I say one more time, into the area of prayer. If I'm, if I'm an intercessor, one of the things I should be reading is what? Books about what? Intercessory. People who have prayed. People who, materials on people like Adro Mari and, and many other people who have read prayers. Because that's the only way I can acquire, no, I can seek knowledge and acquire it. If I want to become a business person, I'm going to have to look into materials that talks about 
the particular business. Because, look, if I want to become a, what? If I want to become a rabbit farmer, and I go read about raising cows, do rabbit and cows have the same pattern? No, because what rabbits need and, and the, the knowledge I need for rabbit may be very different from the, the knowledge I need about raising dairy cow. So if I, if I want to be a business person dealing with this, it's different from this other. So that is to mean as a, as a Christian leader, one of the assignment that we have as we buy the truth is to be able to seek for knowledge. Then we acquire it. Knowledge is intentional. Knowledge is what? You, you acquiring knowledge, knowledge is acquired what? Intentionally. I'm going to have to acquire it intentionally. It's, it's not anything that, uh, that, uh, that uh, today I wake up and I'm a very, very effective pastor. I'm, I wake up, I'm, I'm an effective church worker. I'm, I'm an effective uh, worker in the marketplace. No. If that cannot happen, I have to put some intentionality. And Paul would write here to Timothy, First Timothy four thirteen says this: Till I come, give. <laughs> look at this. Give attention to what? Give attention to reading, exhortation, and to doctrine. He's, he's telling him, be, 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 give attention to to reading. Be. Be a person who can, can spend time to lead. One of the greatest things that need to be revived in our generation are men and women who can lead. I know those who, are, who come from our generation. Remember we, Mr. Jogana used to read uh, James Hardre Chase. 1,000 pages. We'll read, we'll read James Henry Chase, those, those novels. 1,000 pages. And, 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 and today, people in our generation don't read a lot. But it is important to become men and women who read. Number five, knowledge and understanding puts a leader in what? Let's say one more time. Knowledge and understanding puts a leader in what? In command. If you look at a statement we are making right there, it says this. The sons of Issachar became what? Became leaders because they understood the time and what was supposed to be done. Let, let's let's uh, pause right there. We are saying the son of Issachar became leaders because, I want us to, under, to, to underline this, they understood the time and what ought to be what? To be done. That is to mean what gave the children of Issachar command was not where they came from was not who was their father, was not even their background. If you look at the scripture, if we, if we, if we read 1 Chronicles 12, 32, it says this, of the sons of Issachar, who had what? Who had understanding of who have what? Let's say one more time. Who had what? Who had the what? Higher. You see, it's starting you, and we are writing this, understanding of the times. Because as leaders, we can have to understand what? Times. Meaning, we, we grew up in the 80s. In the 80s, we used to walk to school one and a half hours. Today, there is, there's no kid, which I know, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know any kid 
Sister Mary would be willing to walk one and a half hours one way to school. And one and a half hours. And we used to, we, we, we were going, uh, I, I went to high school four years. Going one and a half hours, one and a half hours. The, the old man didn't give anything. And it's not that he was mean. It was not available. If what you ate in the evening was to carry you 24 hours until you come in the evening. So what I'm saying is this. Times have changed. If today I demand that, that my children will walk because I did what? <laughs> because I walked to school. Many of you remember that um, when we were growing up and there was the only food and there was somebody who had the key to where the food is kept. If, if, if I leave, if I don't understand, I'm not just talking about food. I'm just saying we're going to have to understand times have what? Times have changed. And as I lead, I, I cannot lead the same way I, I, I was reading two years ago. If um, I was reading something that was, that was, uh, or said somewhere. And they said this. There are many churches. That got frustrated. There are many churches. That never. That uh, were not able to rebound back. From COVID. Because. During. The one year of COVID. There are many churches that only believed. You can only meet. You can, you can only meet if, if, there is, if, you, if there is, if we don't meet in person, it is where two or three are what? <laughs> are gathered. If, if we are not together, there is no church. And when COVID ended and they, they were trying to look for the members, some had gone to the club, some had, because <laughs> as leaders, we need to understand that times change. The message do not change. But the delivery of the message do what? Many of you who, when I, when I first came to this country, there were no phones in, in Kenya, as, as in a lot of phones. We, we, gotta have, we were calling to the neighbor's house. Tell the neighbor, go tell so and so, Mama, Mama Luce, I'll be calling such and such a time. If we wanted to talk anything in detail, we used to write each other letters. That letter would take a month of probably five weeks to get here. So if I went to a mailbox and I see a letter with so many stamps, my heart used to kick, almost come out of my, <laughs> my chest because already I know this is who has written and I'm about to read something good. I would also sit down Write the same thing because when we were talking on the phone, she is either on somebody's house, and many of you remember those phones were in the living room, so we, <laughs> we, we couldn't say anything. So, 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 what I'm saying is this but now, if you see somebody going to the post office, you look at them and ask them, What did you say you are you're going to do in the post office? Because we, we don't even post letters anymore. Today, even people in Kenya, we do video chat, we, we text each other, we WhatsApp, we, you see, times have done what? Have changed. <laughs> have changed. Uh, one of my friends here saw me with a checkbook and he asked me, you still use these? <laughs> you, you still use these? Because you see, even having a checkbook right now, you, you are being now regarded as ancient. Because <laughs> And, and I'm not saying that we know there, there are still places and business that have to use checks, but, but uh, the world is moving to plastic into mobile money. The times are changing such that, you remember, I remember many times you remember we used to have stamps. I think you have a booklet of 20 stamps so that because every month we are sending our bills. Now we don't have to send bills. Whether you're in Kenya, you can pay using whatever. Ripana and Pesa, these, uh, it is here, you can pay your bills. So, as a leader, I need to understand times do what? Change. So, if I want to become relevant, 
in the 22nd, in the 21st century. I can only now understand the times. The what? The times. What do the people? Because look, the way I was raised, the way I was raised me, I can't raise my children. Because I go to jail. Literally. I know my father is not watching this. But if, if, if I do half, if I give my children half of what I received, I'll be the guest of state. Because it, it will be termed as children what? Abuse. But, but, uh, but uh, to us, it was, it was discipline and we are who we are because of what we got. So, what ought to be done, what to do, the chiefs were how many? Let's read. The chiefs were? The chiefs were 200. You have it in your note. And all their brethren. I want to look at this statement here. All their brethren. <laughs> I wanted to write in this, <laughs> Madam Abby, and you'll be blessed. All their brethren were at their what? I, hear, I want to hear you one more time. All their brethren were at what? So because they, they, had, they had two things. They knew the times and they had a solution on what needed to be. That is what gave the sons of Issachar command. Even in today's generation, those who know the times and those who have the solution of what need to be done will continue to become commanders of their brethren. Will become commanders of what? So it doesn't matter in whichever, in whichever sphere. If you, if whoever is able to design times, they will become commanders. So, there are a few statements we are making there. The first one says this. It was understanding and knowledge that gave the sons of Issachar command over their brethren. It is, it is what? It is knowledge. It is understanding and knowledge. They, they knew. They understood the times. And they knew what needed to be done. The next statement we are making says this. Leadership is what? And I want us to read together that. Leadership is the ability to provide solution and meet the needs of followers. I want us to underline this, 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 and this. Then I'll explain. We are saying leadership is a what? <laughs> they are better to do what? To provide solution and meet the needs of followers. So it doesn't matter who it is. Whoever will provide solutions. Whoever will meet the needs of the people. Of, of the people he will be their leader regardless of who they are. That's why you have seen even gang people, gang leaders. You, you ask yourself, why is this person being, having a great following? Because this is, a, this, this is a leadership principle. Whoever has the ability to provide what? And meet the needs of followers will be what? Nobody will follow you or me if you have nothing to offer. If, if people ask you and you say, you know what, I, I don't know. Let me go ask the pastor. I don't you You will lose the ability to lead people if you have no answer. If you, if you and me are not providing what? You're not providing what? Solution. Let me ask you this question. If you happen to to go to a hospital and uh, 
Pastor Sia or anybody, you just go to the hospital. And you meet the doctor. And even before he admit you, he treat you, he tell you, he doesn't even know what to do, even himself. <laughs> because he has, he, he did not even sleep. He has, he, he tells you of how he is, how sick he is. Uh, you would, without even telling him, you'd even ask him, would you mind showing me where are the bathrooms? Not because you have any need for that. But the moment you leave that doctor, you're gone. Because you went to him for what? For, for a solution. That is why what we are saying is this. Is that leadership is the ability to provide solution. Leaders must be solution givers. And must be willing to meet the needs of the people. So, the next statement we are making about leadership says this. Whoever offers solution to the followers will be their leader irregardless of the negative tag placed on them. It doesn't matter. Whoever provides solution to the masses becomes their leader. John 9, 24 to 25 we read, talking about Jesus. It says, so they Again came, they came, they called the man who was bride and said to him, Give glory, give God the glory. We know that that man is a what? Is a sinner. 25. He answered and said, Whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. He, he is, he is wanting to tell them, I do not care. Whether Jesus is a sinner or he is not a sinner, I care less. He said, this, look, at, look at this. I do not know. One thing I know, that I was bright, but now I see. What? You see, these were Pharisees who were trying to put a negative rebel on Jesus. He is a sinner. And one of Jesus, one of the people told, told them, it doesn't matter. He, he may be a sinner, he may be, whatever you say he is, as long as he has, because what we, are, we are talking about leadership. Whoever answers people question, whoever provides them, it doesn't matter whether they are good or they are bad. As long as a person of a people's what? They be, he become their leader. So, the Pharisee, the statement we are making, the Pharisee's effort to persuade the healed man that Jesus was a sinner yielded zero result because he had offered a solution to his need. If you look at this man, if you investigate your scripture, you find that this man was bride from, from when? From birth. He was, from the day he was born, he was bright. So, who is it that is telling this guy, Jesus is a sinner? Help me, help me. The Pharisee, who are they? They are the leaders. They are the leaders. They are the leaders. They are the, they are the present leaders. And they are telling this man, ignore Jesus, because he's a sinner. The guy is saying, I have been bride for how many years? For all my life, and you who is not a sinner have never opened my heart. But the guy you are calling a sinner has opened my heart. So as Christian leaders, this is a dynamic we need to open into. That whoever offers people's solution will always become their leader. If, if somebody meets the need, if, if, you, if, you, if you have studied even the people who lead gangs and whatever, what, the reason why those people are leading those young people is because there is a need. There's a want. 
There is a need they, are, they have identified in of, of acceptance, of, of love, of affirmation on, this, on these young kids. And now because they feel accepted in the gang, they, they, they become, and it doesn't mean that that person is leading them to the right direction. But there is one thing he is doing. So we as Christian leaders can know this. So that we become men and women who offer solution and who meet the needs of the what? Let me say one more time. As a reader, let's go back to readers. Let's go back to the statement that says, the one that says, uh, leaders, leadership is the ability, that one. Leadership is the ability to provide solution and meet the needs of followers. It's just one above the scripture. So, I wanted to look at this here. Leadership is the ability to provide what? And meet the needs of followers. So, every time I don't provide solution, I don't meet the needs what I will have is what? Help me. Somebody help me. Let me say I'm a, I'm a Christian pastor. I'm a bishop. I'm this. I'm this. But I'm not offering. I, I don't meet needs. I don't give solution. So what do I retain? Only one thing that I'll be left with. What is it? Anybody who has it? Higher. Somebody is saying it correctly on the back. That you only have a title. You only have a what? You only have a title of a bishop, of a deacon, of this, of, of this, of a politician, of an MP. Of, but if you can't offer the solution to the people you are leading, you will become irrelevant to them. And they will, you will be left with a title, but they will, whoever meet their needs, the word is aggravate. People will aggravate. They will turn to the person who is meeting their what? Their needs. And you, you, you may say as much as you know what, I'm the pastor, I'm a this, I'm the head of this, I'm the, I'm the head, I'm the... As much as I may say those words or anybody may say them, as a leader, if you don't offer solutions, you become irrelevant. So leadership is not the name. Leadership is this. Providing what? Not saying the problems you have seen. Because you don't have to be a leader. To see problems. All you need to do is to be a good critic. And there are many. But leadership is providing what? Solution. This is what I, this is what I believe we can do with our children. This is what I believe we can do with our, our young adults. This is solution. And meeting the needs. So. The, the next statement we are making is this. A leader cannot brightly lead others. We're talking about knowledge. Why, why do I need to increase the capacity of my knowledge? A leader cannot brightly lead others. Luke 6, the words of the great teacher Jesus says this. And he spoke a parable to them. Can a bride? They Will they not both fall on the ditch? Look at this word here. Can the bride lead the what? What distinguish leadership is the ability to see. Is the ability to give direction. If I'm a Christian leader or I'm a leader in Christ Harvesters, and I'm just like everybody else. I don't even know what... If people, somebody asks me a question, you, you know, I, I don't... Atamimisi? 
even me, I don't know. What distinguishes readership with followership is the ability to see, is the ability to give direction. That's why Jesus is saying a blind person cannot read another blind person. The reason why, number six, we need knowledge is because knowledge produces what? Trust. People can trust you. If you know what you are doing, where you are going, and what needs to be done. Psalms 9 verse 10 says this. And those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. We are making a statement right there that says, leaders, leaders knowledge give them the ability to trust the Lord and to be trusted by those they are leading. Every time I have knowledge, knowledge will enable me to be able, if I know the cause, well, let's say uh, uh, as a preacher, or as a leader, or, I know God myself. I, I know what, where, where we are going. I have, I have seen what need to be done. I have seen what, where we need to go. I can now be able to courageously and people can be able to trust in that. The next statement says this. People will be, people will be required to follow. A Christian leader only if they can demonstrate they are following Christ. Let's read 1 Corinthians 11, 1 from the NIV. It says this. Follow my example as I follow Christ. Follow my example as So what is Paul saying to the church in Corinth? He's saying you, can, you are only authorized to follow me. If I'm a, as a leader, I have shown the trend of me following Christ. As a, as a Christian leader, you can never put a demand on anybody to follow you if you cannot follow the great shepherd. Number seven thing why knowledge is important is this. Knowledge buds persuasion. Knowledge buds what? Knowledge buds what? Persuasion. Second, second Timothy 1, 12 from the NIV says this. Because I know who I have believed. As a, as a Christian leader, as, as a man and a woman called by God to lead, it will be catastrophic if I attempt to lead people to a God that I do not know. To a cause that I'm not uh, familiar. If I, if I may want to guide people into what I personally do not know. I am convinced that he is able to guard that which I have entrusted to him until that day. Christian leaders can only lead people to believe what they know personally. Meaning, your, your, your position to people, my position to people is only when I am already persuaded myself. Second statement, Christian leaders must be persuaded of God's ability to perform what he has promised. So, I'm going to have to get to a place, I have knowledge and I've increased my capacity to understand God is able to do what he has promised. Number eight thing, why, what leaders need to understand about knowledge is that people rise by right. Let's read one more time. People rise by what? We read one more time. People rise by what? People rise by right. Which is equal to what? Knowledge. So I will never be anywhere where I have no knowledge about 
all no understanding about. And you hear people say all the time, niliangukia. <laughs> Ata nifanya nini? Uh, <laughs> and um, you, we, you, you hear this all the time uh, in, uh, on TV. See people who are millionaires and they tells you, I don't know how I, how I got here. <laughs> Some of the people who are business people like Mr. Joseph will tell you, <laughs> you can never be anywhere, even in business, where you did not know. You, there is no way you can be anywhere in business or you can have anything that you do not know. Meaning that you can only rise by what you know. So, and, and people just say that just to just show how humble they are that I found myself a millionaire but I don't know how I got here. Everybody knows how they got to where they are. So, Psalms 36 verse 9 says what? For you, for with you is a what? In your right, we see right. We've, we've talked about this way before. The psalmist is saying, for with you is a fountain of life. I'm interested with part B that says, in your right, we do what? In your right, we see right. And the statement we make there says it is in God's right, other word, a Christian reader is guaranteed to see right. How does right come? Psalms 119, 130 says, the entrance, the entrance of your words give light. Give, give understanding, gives understanding to the simple. I wanted to, to look at this statement here. Gives what? Meaning, if you look at the Bible, the Bible is saying the entrance of your words. So let's, let's go back there because this is leadership. The entrance, I want you to underline this word, entrance of your what? Words gives what? Meaning, I cannot, as a, as a leader, not be reading the Bible and I'm praying God for right. It doesn't work because, because God has provided you and me the avenue through which his right will come. And if, if you want right, he has even given you the avenue where right is because if you want to know one of the greatest leadership manual it's not even the books that are written they are, we read them but if you want to refer to the greatest leadership manual it is the bible the bible gives you everything you need to know about leadership the bible tells you of leaders who gloriously succeeded. It tells you leaders who succeeded like Solomon but did mistakes that caused them to fail. It tells you of many, many, teaches you about many leadership lessons. But that word has to enter your heart. And it tells you, not only does the entrance give light, the next statement says, it gives understanding to the word. To the simple. Meaning, understanding comes by the word of God. New Living Translation from the same says, the teaching of your word gives light. So even the simple can understand. That's what we're talking about. That as a Christian leader, if I, if I want to rise, if I want to rise, one of my greatest companions should be the word of God. Because we have said, one of the reasons why we need knowledge is because men rise by what? Men rise by right. Job 42, Job says something that is amazing. Verse 5, he says, My ears have had, my ears had 
of you. But now, see, <laughs> what Job is saying is that you can hear of somebody, but there's a difference between hearing and knowing. Because he's saying, my, my ears have heard of you, but my eyes have seen you. Meaning, Job is saying, I've gotten to a place where now I have seen the light. I, I, am, I have interacted with the right carefree. Now my eyes can see. So, as a Christian leader, because this is what all, all who we've been called to, to be. Whether it's in the marketplace, we do it from the biblical perspective. Our right is what will prepare us into greatness. Leaders rise to the extent they have embraced their right. Isaiah 60, verse 1 to, to 3, a familiar scripture that we normally read says this. Arise, sign, Let's go back. Arise, shine. I, I want you to underline this, this statement here because it's important for you and for me. Arise, shine, for you are right. So what does that tell you as a Christian leader? Let's only use, let's only do you are, you are right. Let's leave everything else. Let's just do for uh, you are right. Because there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a point we want to make. What does that tell you? It says, arise, shine, for you are right has done what? Help me understand. What does that mean? Is we... This is a, a good place of discussion and there's no wrong answer. It says, arise, shine, for you are right has come. Anybody who want to give it a try? Arise, shine, for your right has let me say this. You cannot use your neighbor's right. <laughs> you see, if, 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 uh, if you're living around a neighborhood and your neighbor has street rights, you can use the, the, the rights from your neighbor's house to, sweep, to do something outside. That's allowed. But in rising in the kingdom of God, you can never use anybody's right. Meaning, if I have a revelation, that revelation will help me rise me, not you. Meaning, arise, shine, for your right has. That is why as a leader, it becomes important for you to engage with knowledge because you cannot rise beyond you embracing the right and 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 i don't know whether you've had a revelation and you are so excited <laughs> and you're sharing with somebody how you had a revelation and you are, and you, and you, see, you see them. They are still, they are still flipping messages on their phone. You, you're asking, are they in the flesh? Are they not? Because you see, they cannot be excited about your right. Sometimes we blame people that they are not because they can share with. It is your right. You are the one who had the Lord appeared to at night. You are the one who has the revelation when you are praying. So, and that is why we have allowed people to silence, to put out the fire that we have because we did not see other people share in our excitement. This is, I want to free you. 
they are not supposed to be excited because the right is you is yours and we have said people rise by what by their right bible says arise for your right has come and the glory of the lord has risen upon you see darkness covers darkness covers darkness covers I wanted to draw in this word here. The Bible doesn't say that there will be eclipse or it will be dark. Every time you see this word in the, in the scripture, darkness, what does it mean? Every time you see darkness, darkness is a representation of what? Ignorance. Of what? Ignorance. The Bible is saying darkness will cover the what? The whole earth. The Bible is telling you that the, the earth will continue. The people in this earth will continue to be what? Ignorant. Look at what the Bible is telling you. Let's continue. See, darkness will cover the whole earth. I, I want you to understand this. Thick darkness. Thick what? You may think that people are more wiser now because we have iPhones and whatever. But, but, but if, you, if you look at even the listening of people and, and how people are dismissive to God, and if you look at people today, people are more ignorant about the truth of the word of God than even before. Because the Bible is telling you, th thick, dark meaning, ignorance is out there with the people. Let's do the next statement. But, but the Lord rises where? Meaning, the change is not coming from them. I am the one who will, who will rise by right to become a solution to them. The Bible says, and his glory appears to you. Look at the next statement. Nations nations will come I want us to unwrite this word here nations will come let's say one more time nations will come meaning whoever has the right will attract the nations whoever in this city will solve the problems that are in this city, they will have no facility enough to contain the people in this city. Nation will come to what? Let me say one more time. People will not come to church. <laughs> Let me repeat that. People will not come to church. Nations will not come to church. Nation will come to what? Nations will come to the right. People will come because they have needs. They, 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 they are sick and they, they had that in that place, if I go, there is healing. They, I was bound and if I go there, there is deliverance. So people will come to the house of God seeking for what? For right. Meaning, right itself is solution. So, nations will come to your right. So, do you want nations to come? I know, yes, that's what we've been praying for. But, make sure they're not coming because of anything else. They will not come because our sermons are good. No. They will not come because we sang good songs. No. Do not come because we have a good sanctuary or we, no. What will bring the nations is the right. As Christian leaders, are we able to offer solutions to the hurting communities 
in our neighborhood? Do we have the answer to the disfranchised young people, to the, the young people who do we have a solution? Because whoever have a solution, the nations will come to that right. So as we pray and as we build our capacity, our capacity should be to become relevant, to be able to become right. The next statement says, and kings, kings, kings to the what? I want you to write this word. Nations come because of right. But kings will not come because there is right. They will come because of what? There are, there are, there are people there that we will, who will be attracted by the body of Christ because of the solution we are offering. They were sick, they got healed, they, or this. But, but kings don't come because of right. <laughs> no. Because some of them are not even looking for solutions. Because already some of them have the what? So there has to be another level of excellence. There has to be another dimension of, as, a, as a Christian leader for, for me to be able to attract the kings. There is a way I need to carry myself. There is an etiquette. There, there is a mannerism I have to adapt for me to adapt to, to be able to attract kings. The kings, let us read those statements. We have a few minutes. The what? The, the rising of readers, the, the rising of readers by their light is the hope of the earth and the people who are covered by what? By ignorance. Meaning, we are the hope. Leaders attract nation only through their lights and kings by their brightness. Jesus himself, when he was talking, says leaders are called to become the, the sort and the right. Matthew 5, 13 to, to what? To 16 says, you are the sort of the earth, but if salt loses its saltness, how can it be made salty again? It will, it will, it's no longer what? Except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the right of the world, a town built on a hill, cannot be hindered. Neither do we put right do we do people light a ramp and put it under a boil. Instead they put it um, on uh, they put it on its stand and gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way that your right shine before before others that they may glorify that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So very quickly, we want to say this. That's a scripture loaded with things we can say for many hours. We are saying this. Salt can lose its saltiness. Salt can lose what? Salt can lose what? Let's say one more time. Salt can lose its what? Salt can lose its saltiness. That's the statement we are making. And we are saying, leaders should always be relevant. <laughs> Otherwise, let's do this together. Leaders should always be what? And write this word here. Otherwise, they will be trampled underfoot. That does not mean that people will tell you, come here, we know. That is to mean nobody 
comes to you for, for anything. No, people don't consider you. Other than you saying, I'm a pastor, I'm a this, I'm a this. Meaning, the salt can lose its saltness. It can lose its flavor. So, you and me as Christian leaders, we have the, the assignment to always maintain our saltness. To always maintain our flavor. Leaders, as we have said, are called to be what? Are called to give light. So, very quickly, we'll see, we've talked about knowledge. I want us to quickly, in a few minutes, talk about number four, which now says leadership influence is determined by our capacity. Leadership Leadership influence, that, that's the, the last thing we'll, we'll talk about. Leadership influence is determined by our capacity. Number one, a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. Higher. Let, let's, let's, let's go back to the scripture again. A man's gift I want us to underline this two word. Make room. Then I'll, then I'll say something. A man's gift make room. Then I'll say something. Let, let's continue. And do what? And brings him before great men. So let's look at the statement we are making there. There is no empty room available at the top. There is what? There is no empty room available at the top. It is capacity that makes room for you. People complain, you know what I... But there is no space available at the top. Only your capacity. Today, Let's say you, Minister Beth, you're working as a very serious nurse. But if in the next two years you go to school and become a doctor, will you any longer work as a nurse? But you see, when you are working as a nurse, at the top, there was no place for you to become a what? A doctor. But when you went to school and became a doctor, now you created the what? Now you became Dr. Beth. But that, that, that place was not there. You, you may argue, you may say, you know what? They, I'm discriminated, they don't... But you don't even have to do anything. All you need to do, go to school. Get your, your license as a doctor in, in whatever. Right there at the top, a place will be created for who? For Dr. Beth. So what are we saying? There is no what? There is no empty space at the top. It is capacity that will make room for you. So what does that mean? It means if I am not willing to use my gift, I should change myself. Paul here warned against neglecting the gift. Every leader must ensure they do what? Every leader must ensure they develop their gift. Because my gift and your gift cannot grow automatically. First Timothy, first Timothy, I believe, 4, 6, 4, 14 to 16 says this. Do not do what? Neglect the gift that is in you, which was given by, by prophecy with the laying of hands of eldership. 
Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. Take heed to yourself and the doctrine. Continue in them for in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. What Paul is telling his mentee, Timothy, he's, tell, he's saying this. If you neglect your gift, it's true, God can give me a gift. And a gift, doesn't matter how, whichever it is. If I don't use, if I don't develop that gift, I neglect it. That gift need, God gives me a gift. Let's say he gave me a, a gift of being an apostle. But God can never develop me in that. I'm going to have to take time and, and get, develop that gift. God can give you a gift of healing. God can give you a gift of this or a gift of, but it is upon you and me to partner with the Holy Spirit to develop that gift. A few statements we are making is this. Leadership success is for those who give themselves entirely. Next statement. The leader's progress must be evident to all being read. Meaning, according to Paul, I can't be saying I'm going somewhere. And the people I'm leading don't even see any movement in my life. The third statement is this. It is only through leadership growth and development that the leader is able to serve both themselves and those being their leading. The second thing about influence is this. The hand of the diligent will rule. Proverbs 12, 24 says this. The hand of the diligent will rule, but the risen man will be put into false labor. Number three, thing about influence is, and I believe is the last thing, is success is a product of what? It's a product of skill. Whether in Olympic or anything, those people who have succeeded, they succeed because of skill. Ecclesiastic 10.10 10 says, if an ax, this is, I want to put it in your Bible, that's from, uh, from uh, NIV. Put it in your, in your notes. It's, it's from NIV. It says, if an ax is dull and the edge are sh and sharpened, more strength is needed. But I want you to see this. But skill brings what? Meaning, if you want to succeed in any area of life, he, he's, he's giving you an example of how people work hard because the axe is dull, is unsharpened. He, he is saying, if you are given time, if you are given an oak tree to cut, spend more time sharpening the axe. Because the more the axe is sharpened, the more easier and the more less time you use to bring the oak, the axe down, the, the oak down. So, meaning it is skill that brings success. You, who you serve is determined by your skill. It's not by your color, but by what? So let's read Proverbs 22, 29. One more scripture than what we are done. Do you see somebody skilled in what? Do you see somebody skilled in their work? Look at what the Bible says. It's saying, they will serve before kings. They will not serve before officials of low rank. You're not the one who determines who you serve. It is capacity you build in your, in your leadership and your skill determine who you'll be serving. So if I want to change my leadership st status, it's not changing my, my Facebook portfolio. That's not, that's not what will change my leadership status. It's not me printing business cards. That will not change my, my status. Who I serve is dependent on one singular thing. Let's go back to where it started. It says, do you see someone skilled in what? In their work. They will serve before kings. 
Our last scripture says this. It's only the wise leaders that are guaranteed to shine. Daniel 12 verse 3, I found the scripture to be very interesting. We read, what does it say? Those who are wise, those who are wise, whether in business, whether in any area of their life, in career, they shall do what? Like the brightness of the firmament and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. So what the scripture is talking about, we've in summary have talked about knowledge, we're talking about capacity, and we have said it is knowledge that helps you build your capacity. We have also talked about your influence is a factor that helps you become a great leader. And, and you can influence as something that is increased. You, you increase influence by the skill you acquire. 